Okay, this video is going to be looking at differentiability with your favorite kind of function if you're given a piecewise function explicitly defined by some two or more parts. Um, and the question is, is the piecewise function differentiable at all x values? So I'm going to repeat what I've said about a lot of piecewise functions every time we look at them, is that if we're looking at the pieces individually, we've got x squared, which is a quadratic graph. That would be differentiable on all values of its domain. And then we have 2x, and individually that would also be differentiable on all values of its domain. So the only part that we would be concerned with would be the part where this piecewise graph is coming together, which is at x equals 0. Sometimes I like to start with a picture just to visualize what's going on. So if I'm doing that, um, I would start with thinking about I've got x squared coming from the left-hand side. So that first piece is going to be part of my parabola, and then I've got 2x coming from the right-hand side, and that's going to be a line that's intersecting at my origin and has a slope of 2, so that's going to be something like this. So the question is, at that point, and you might have an idea based on what we talked about with the graphical analysis of something, a function being differentiable of what our answer should be, but how can we show that? Um, what would be the appropriate steps to follow? So basically we need to check two things. We need to check and see if it's continuous because it definitely has to be continuous in order for it to be differentiable. We talked about that. That's a breaking point for differentiability is if there is a discontinuity. And then the second thing is we need to make sure not only are the two pieces meeting at the same point, but are their slopes meeting. So think of the absolute value graph that we looked at and how if there's a corner, it's never going to become locally linear. So we need to look at the slopes as we're approaching that point from both sides. And that's what I'm about to do. So follow along with the steps that I'm about to take, and we'll see what happens here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test for continuity. So is it continuous at x equals 0 is kind of my question here. So it seems to me we had a test for continuity in the last chapter, and we're going to go right back to that. There were three parts to it. So the first part was find the functional value. So at 0, it looks like it's defined by my first piece, which is x squared. So it's going to be 0 squared, which is 0. Part 2, I need to analyze, is there a limit as x is approaching 0 for that function? which means I'm really going to do two things. I'm going to look at the limit as x is approaching 0 from the left, which is plug into my first piece, and that would be 0 squared, which is again 0, same thing I just did. Limit as x is approaching 0 from the right. Now I'm using my other piece, so I'm plugging into 2x, which would be 2 times 0, which is still 0. So I get the same limit from both sides, which means I can say that the limit is 0. And then I take a look at those two values, 0 and 0, and I can make the conclusion that f of 0 is equal to the limit as x is approaching 0 of f of x. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equals 0. Okay, so I definitely have a continuous, and obviously from the graph we got that as well. But good review of something that we've been doing, and if it's something that you can't picture or you have to show it, you've got a method for doing that. Um, so that would be part 1. Part 2 would be... I'm going to shrink this so I have some room to work. Part 2 is going to be, let's check and see... Does the derivative exist at that point? So in order for it to be differentiable at x equals 0, this is what I'm questioning, the left-hand slope has to equal the right-hand slope. So I'm going to take the derivative or evaluate the derivative of my left-hand piece, which is x squared. And we could write this out with limit statements, but since we have our shortcuts, we might as well use them. Um, derivative of x squared. And essentially, I'm doing it at x equals 0. We use this vertical bar and then write an x value to say where we're evaluating the limit. So it's going to look like this. My derivative of x squared is going to be 2x, and I'm evaluating that at x equals 0. That's just a notation that we use to represent derivative at a point. Whoops. 
Let me clean that up. Sorry, I tried to erase it. Um, so I'm trying to do derivative at x equals 0, so now I know to plug that in. So 2 times 0, which is 0. So derivative from the left is 0, and that should make sense if you think about that parabola continuing. The vertex point of my parabola is where it is leveling off and then turning back around and would temporarily have a slope of 0 or a horizontal tangent. Derivative of the right-hand piece, on the other hand, is going to be derivative of 2x is just 2. So at x equals 0, since my slope is 2 for the entire function, and my slope is going to be 2. And at this point, I'm going to take a look at my answers, and I got a slope of 0 from the left. So remember, this is my left-hand slope, and this is my right-hand slope, or derivative. And if those are not equal to each other, that means it's never going to be smooth. Essentially, there's a corner. Well, it doesn't totally look like a sharp corner. There's a corner-ish thing going on. So, therefore, we say the function is not differentiable at x equals 0 is my conclusion. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and look at a second example. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen. I did go ahead and work through this one to save a little time, so I would encourage you to cover up my solution and try it. You've got the function there given. It's another piecewise function. And go ahead and see what you can get, and then check your work. Or you can just look through mine to make sure you feel confident. So if you want to pause the video and try it, go ahead. Okay, now that you had a chance to work through this, Let's go ahead and look through my solution. I'll briefly talk through it. Um, I checked to see if it was continuous, and in this case, we did get continuous. The functional value was equal to the limit. I didn't bother graphing this one, but I found the functional value. I checked the left and right limits to get a limit as x is approaching 2 and got them to be equal to each other. Once I established that it was continuous, I went on to see if it was differentiable at x equals 2, which means I found the slope of the left piece, x squared, at x equals 2. found the slope of the right piece at x equals 2. And the slopes were not equal in this case. So because I got a slope of 4 and a slope of negative 4, two different slopes, um, I'm going to conclude f of x is not differentiable at x equals 2. Okay. I'm not going to do another example, but you could picture examples from last chapter where we had a function that was not continuous. If it's not continuous, um, that's an automatic, not differentiable. You wouldn't even need to check the slopes. And then obviously you should be able to picture when the slopes would be the same at a point and we would have something that is a continuous graph. Slopes are the same when I'm coming to that point and then we would say differentiable. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how to deal with piecewise functions when you're given a function that's defined as a piecewise function.